Hello everyone, hope you have your notes in front of you and we're ready to talk about section 8.3 which is having to do with building confidence intervals but this time instead of building them for population proportions we're going to be building them for population means. So the formula when you're trying to build a confidence interval based on a population mean is given by this formula here in front of you and it's x bar plus or minus the z critical value times the standard error. Now notice the difference between this and the last formula which had the p hats. This one has x bars and the standard deviation is different this time. We're using the formula that we learned in the previous chapter for means. The z critical value is still the same z critical value that we used in the previous in the last section. So that is x bar, that's our estimate. z star is our critical value and then that is the standard deviation of the statistic. In this case, the statistic is based on a mean, so we're going to use that formula. Put those two things together, and that is, of course, your margin of error. So here's an example problem. A random sample of SAT of the SAT math scores of 500 California high school students yields a mean of 461. We know that the standard deviation for all seniors who take the test is 100. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean of all California students. So this time, we're building a confidence interval to try and capture the true mean on the SAT math section for California high school students. So here's how we're going to do this up. We're going to set this up the same way we did in the last section. We're going to write it out using panic. So population of interest is x bar, which is the sample mean. So in this sample it was 461. We need to address our assumptions. We were given that this is a simple random sample from the population. From prior experience, we should know that SAT scores are approximately normally distributed, and that's just usually pretty much all standardized tests, the scores wind up being approximately normal. And in this case, they told us the population standard deviation is 100. Name the interval. It's very important to name it. This is a one sample, 95% confidence interval for the population mean. We're going to use the formula that's given to you there. And then we're going to use that formula to calculate our interval, which winds up being between 452 and 470. So then our conclusion is we are 95% confident that the true mean SAT math score for California seniors would be between 452 and 470. All right, let's do another example. A test for the level of potassium in the blood is not perfectly precise. So suppose that repeated measurements for the same person on different days vary normally with a standard deviation of 0.2. We take a random sample of three and it has a mean of 3.2. We want to build a 90% confidence interval for the mean. So we're going to address our population of interest is X bar. Our sample of three is 3.2. The mean is 3.2. We are told that it's an SRS of blood measurements. We are told that the potassium level is normally distributed. Therefore, we don't have to worry about the fact that this is such a small sample. And we are told that the standard deviation is 0.2. Name the interval. This time we're doing a one sample, 90% confidence interval for the population mean. Use the formula. This time on this slide, I actually wrote it out. So X bar is 3.2. The 90% Z star value is 1.645. So that's where that number comes from. The standard deviation is 0.2. And we're going to divide by the square root of 3. Use your calculator. And you can figure out the interval is between 3.01 and 3.389. So then don't forget, very important to write your conclusion. We are 90% confident that the true mean potassium level is between 3.01 and 3.39. What about with a 95% confidence interval? What would happen? Well, with a 95% confidence interval, everything else stays the same. What changes is the 1.96. Right, at 95% we use a 1.96 and that makes our interval wider. So if we want to be more confident, we need a wider interval. What about with a 99% confidence interval? Once again, everything stays the same except the 2.576 changes. Right, To be 99%, we need an even bigger interval. So our interval keeps getting bigger and bigger the more confident we want to be. If we want to be 99% confident that we're capturing the true mean, we need a big interval. If we're OK with only being 90% confident, then we can get away with a smaller interval. A random sample of 50 HH students was taken, and their mean SAT score was 1250. We want to assume that standard deviation was 105. 
what's the 95% confidence level for the mean SAT scores? All right, and here's one more example. This time, suppose we have this random sample of SAT scores. So we have seven scores there, and we want to calculate the 95% confidence interval for the true mean. Again, assume the S is 105. The first thing we'd have to do in this case is we'd have to actually add up these seven scores and divide by seven to get our X bar. So our X bar is 1192.9. Our assumptions, we're given a simple random sample. The distribution is approximately normal. Now in this case, we don't know whether it's normal, so we can look at the box plot. So we, I drew a box plot of those seven scores, and you can see that the box plot is symmetrical, which leads us to believe that the distribution will be approximately normal. Standard deviation is known, so we want to name the interval. It's a one sample 95% confidence interval. We want to write out the formula and then draw our conclusion in context. All of these steps are very important on a test or a quiz. These are the things that I would expect you to write out. If you're missing parts of this, you are going to be doc points, so you want to make sure that you have everything here uh, very neatly written out. The last little thing I'm going to talk about here is if you need to find a sample size. So if we have a certain margin of error that we want to achieve, sometimes we're asked to find the sample size that's necessary in order to get that margin of error. And to do that, we have to remember that our margin of error formula is given by this, z star equals sigma divided by the square root of n. Always round up to the nearest person. We can't have half a person, so we always round up. So as an example, the heights of HH male students are normally distributed with a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. How large of a sample would be necessary in order to be accurate within plus or minus 0.75 inches with a 95% confidence interval? So 0.75 is our margin of error. So we're going to set up our formula. 1.96 is the Z critical value that goes with the 95% confidence interval. So that's where that number came from. 2.5 inches divided by the square root of N. We don't know how big our sample needs to be, so we're going to use the square root of N. And this is going to equal 0.75 because that's the margin of error that we want. First step is to divide both sides by 1.96, and you get that. Then we're going to cross multiply going to move that square root of n over to the other side. Then I'm going to divide by 0.383 on both sides. And I get that answer. And then to get rid of that square root, I'm going to square both num square both sides. And I wind up getting 42 point something. So I'm going to round up. Therefore, n equals 43. So that's all I have for you tonight. Hopefully, you have good notes. And when you come in tomorrow, we'll be able to talk about, do some practice problems and talk about what you learned. That's all, folks.